All right, here we're with 5.2 on take two. Um, I hope my voice holds up. We're talking about angle, circles, and the sine ratio. So uh, I just put this angle master because it was my first year engineering. It was 1991. I had to buy this thing, which was a protractor connected with a ruler, and it was awesome for drawing lines at an angle. But anyhow, you see a snowboard there. Um, uh, figure skating, Sokotoa, circle, a truss from that movie. So usually on my when I'm doing a lesson, I ask people, what are everything you know about angles? And then ask them two questions. So this is usually what they say. The angles inside of a rectangle is 360, inside of a triangle is 180. Uh, protractor, use it for angles. Degrees, radians, and gradients, which are the ways of measuring angles. Obtuse if it's greater than 90, acute if it's less than 90, it's called a right angle if it's 90. There's the Z pattern, these two guys are the same. There's the C pattern, these two guys are the same as long as the two lines are horizontal. There's the F pattern, oh, I said that these guys are the same, they're not the same. They add up to 180. 180. The F pattern, A and B are the same. Then we got supplementary angles when they add up to 180, A plus B is 180 and complementary angles if they're add up to 90. 360 degrees to go one fully around, 180 on a straight line, and actually the sum of the interior angles is 180 and times two. So for the triangle, it's three sides, three minus two is one, one times 180 is 180. For a rectangle, well, n is four, because it's four sides, four minus two is two, two times 180 is 360, and you can do that for any sides. So then I ask, can angles be bigger than 360? And usually people say no. And then I ask them, okay, any snowboarders? What's the biggest turn you've done? Or, or ice skaters, figure skating? And you do angles that are bigger than 360. Because that means that you turn more than once. And that's okay. And can angles be positive or negative? And they usually don't know, but we're going to cover this. So let me tell you about some of the definitions that we're going to be talking about. This is new stuff. Believe it or not, there's a lot more new about angles. So the first thing is to talk about standard position. Every angle we're going to do from now on is going to be in standard position. And that just means that the vertex is right there, and I started on the green line. And I ended up on the blue line, which the green line is called the initial arm. And that's not going to move. That's going to stay right there. But the terminal arms, where the angle finishes, can go all around. And actually, you can go around two, th three times, 100 times, or go backwards, or go this way. And wherever it ends, the angle measured from the green line, that's going to be my angle. OK, so far? Positive angles. Well, if I go counterclockwise, so you remember this? This is called quadrant 1. This is called quadrant 1. This is called quadrant 2. This is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. So if it goes one, two, three, four, that's a positive angle. If it goes backwards, it's a negative angle. So this angle right here could be a minus 60, or it could be a positive on this side. But since I marked it going this way, I know it's a minus 60. OK, so positive angle goes counterclockwise. Negative angle goes clockwise. Unit circle, this is super important for us. It um, it's basically a circle that it starts in the origin, and it's got a radius of one. It's very very simple. Why is the big deal? Well, you're gonna see when we develop um, some of the the sine ratio shape and everything else. But here's your x, and that is your y. Of course, if the x is on this side, it's gonna be a negative x, and as it goes down, it's gonna be a negative y. But still, the unit circle gives you a radius of one. Terminal point, that's pretty easy. It's just the dot at the end of the terminal arm. And that's going to have some uh, coordinates. So we usually have to find out the x and the y when they give us some information. And we're going to do that in just a sec. So that's called a terminal point. So find the terminal point means I find to find the x and the y for that, the end of the uh, terminal arm. Coterminal angles. This is pretty easy, but at first it kind of gives us a hard time. So basically, all of these angles look the same, right? But it depends what I draw my little arrow. Because if I say this guy went like this, see, that's a negative angle. But it ended up on the same spot as this one. Actually, I just copied this over, right? Or if I went 
two turns around. Well, the end angle is going to be different because that angle is going to be bigger than 360. And this, let's say it's, I don't know, that's 45. Let's say that's 50 degrees. That's 360 plus 50, right? So, and I could just turn it a hundred times if I wanted to. So it's a very large angle, but they all end up on the same spot. So what's common about this, guys? Well, they share the same terminal arm, which means that they are co-terminal angles. That's what they call co-terminal angles. Is that okay? So finding co-terminal angles is super easy. All I got to do is just add 360 a bunch of times. So let me change the side. So co-terminal of 40. So if the angle is 40, well, to get a co-terminal, let me call it theta 1. I just add 360 because that just means I went 40 and another turn so 4, 6, that's 400 so 40 and 400 happen to be um, co-terminal if I subtract 360 which means it's 40 and I went backwards 360 then that's going to give me a negative angle of 320. So now I know that 320, 400, and 40 all share the same terminal co terminal arm, which means they're called co-terminal angles. And I can do this. I'm not actually going to actually make it one more. Basically, I can say times 10 of 360. And that's going to give me another angle. So 10 times 360 is 3,600. So 3,640 is another coterminal angle to this. So all those yellow ones are angles that are going to end up on the same spot. Pretty easy. There's a formula for it, but that just means if my angle coterminal is going to be equal to my original angle plus n times 360. And n belongs to the integers. So I can have 1, 2, 3, 4, or minus 1, minus 2. And that just gives us another coterminal angle. It's not a big deal. Just remember that you do one more turn, two more turns, three more turns, and then you get a coterminal angle. So here are some calculations. Um, find the angle in standard position with the terminal points minus 2 and 8. Okay. This video is going to be a little longer, it looks like it. So if I have minus 2 and 8 would be somewhere there. Let's pretend. I can make a little triangle here. But what I'm really going after is this angle, because that's standard position. Remember, standard position started the green on the green side, and that was the green side. So how do I find this angle? Well, it's easy. I could just find out that angle and then subtract it from 180. So. I'm going to redraw my triangle to make it a little easier for me. So it's not the scale, but that's 8, and that's 2. Now that's negative 2, but the distance is 2, right? So what do I have here? I have an angle, I have the opposite, and I have the adjacent. So that's tangent. Tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Fill in the information. Tangent of the angle is equal to 8 over 2. 8 over 2 is 4. Let me switch to calculator. Where's my calculator? So, second tangent of 8 over 2, close bracket, enter, 75.9, so that's, let's say 76. Go back. So, Theta is equal to 76 degrees. Now that's the yellow angle, right? That's the yellow angle, but I want to find out the red. So in order to find out the red, I need to say, well, that's 180, take away that yellow angle. So the angle that I'm looking for, let me call it alpha, it's 180 minus 76, which is equal to 104. And that's the angle that I was looking for. Okay? So that's 104. That's the angle in standard position that has the terminal point minus 2 and 8. Give this a try and then check the answer on the PDF that's attached. And one last example. Find, is it one? Yeah. Find the coordinate of the terminal point in the unit circle such that it forms an angle of 240. 
what does this mean? Okay, so let's draw a little graph. So I have the unit circle, kind of. <laughs> angle of 240. Well, the angles are 0 here, then it goes to 90 here, then it goes to 180 here, and this one, not a lot of people remember, that's 270. So an angle of 240 would be somewhere here, right? And that creates a triangle here, a right angle triangle there. Now that's my x and that's my y. So let me recreate that triangle over here. Poorly. That's my x, that's my y. And that angle, well, how big is that angle? Well, the whole thing, this big angle is 240. So how much is my yellow angle? Oops. How much is my yellow angle right there? And that's not yellow. My yellow angle is going to be 240, take away 180. So 240, take away 180, is equal to 60. So I know that this angle is 60. So let's find out x and y. I only have, I don't have enough information except that this is the unit circle, which means that their radius is one, and that just becomes really nice because if I want to find x, it's going to be cosine because adjacent and hypotenuse, and cosine of 60 is equal to x over one. Hey, that's just x. So x is just cos of 60. So if I go plug in my calculator cos of 60, that gives me 0 0.5, I believe. Why is this not collaborating? So cosine of 60, it is equal to 0 0.5. Again, switch over, 0 0.5. And same thing for y, because now it's opposite over hypotenuse. So cosine of, uh, not cosine, but sine. Sine of 60 is equal to y over 1, which again, it's just y equals to sine of 60, which if you plug it in, is equal to 0 0.866. And I know this because it's actually it's a common number. So something interesting came in and it's like the coordinates of the unit circle relate to this because now I just got that x is equal to cos of the angle and y is equal to sine of the angle and that's going to be super important for us to figure out what sine of theta looks like okay here are the questions that you're going to working on tomorrow and I'll leave you with this little thing that I saw on the internet, and I would like to know what you think of it. Do you think this makes sense? Yes or no, and why? All right, I'll see you soon.